Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Today we're going to show you how to build a mini elevated raised bed in five easy steps. That's right. You may remember we had a cattle panel trellis right here and a raised bed. Too tight of a space. Time for a change. We pulled it out. Now we're going to build a raised bed with no construction experience required. That's right, it's a super easy build. Very excited to build this raised bed. It's actually my very favorite raised bed from my book on raised bed gardening. And it's super easy to access your vegetables, saves your knees and your back. Really great for kids. You can build it custom height for your kids. When they grow their own veggies, they're much more likely to eat their veggies. And you can fit it in a small space on a deck or a patio. Super excited to have a brand new look here. All right. So let's dig into the project. Let's do it. The cool thing is all the instructions are written down for you in my book on raised bed gardening. And here's what you're gonna need for the project. Today we're gonna make a two by four raised bed. You can definitely custom make the raised bed to fit your space. We've got the longer plates of wood that are the long sides of the bed. Those are four feet by two inches by 10 inches long. A lot of hardware stores will cut the wood for you or you can cut it yourself at home to fit. And over here, we've got the short sides of the raised bed and those are four planks you need for that. You need two feet by two inches by 10 inches on that size. Then we've got two planks of wood here. This is for the bottom of the raised bed. These are 51 inches long by two inches by 10 inches. Then you need a two by four 51 inches long also for the bottom. Here we have on the end here, this is a fence post, a four by four fence post, 10 foot that we cut into two and a half foot lengths and those are for the nice dirty legs of the raised bed. All the supplies and measurements are written down in my book on raised bed gardening, so you have something to follow while you're building your project. You're also gonna need some landscape fabric to line the bottom of the bed with, a drill gun, some deck screws, some hex screws, a 3 8 inch drill bit, and a smaller drill bit to drill pilot holes, a staple gun, and your trusty tape measure. Now let's talk for a minute about the type of wood that we're using. We're actually using Douglas fir. There's so many options for types of wood. Cedar and redwood are naturally rot resistant and pest resistant. However, they cost a little bit more. Douglas fir and pine, what we're using today, are not rot resistant or naturally pest resistant. They don't last quite as longer, but they're less expensive. Now there's always the debate of treated versus untreated wood. Treated wood has chemicals that are used on it to help with rot resistance and pest resistance. And the treated wood these days are a lot safer than they used to be. But if that's a concern for you, you might want to use an untreated wood. But just keep in mind, an untreated wood will rot a little bit quicker in a humid or wet climate. So basically, just choose the wood that fits for your situation and your budget. Now let me just show you what your finished project is going to look like. Your mini elevated raised bed is actually going to have two different levels. It's really pretty. So step one is to build the two levels of the raised bed. Now we're actually reusing this wood. We built this raised bed for our book to take photographs. Then we actually had to take it apart because we had no space for it. Now we we're literally following the instructions right in the book. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to show you how to drill a pilot hole. That prevents your uh, your wood from cracking when you uh, drill in the screws. So we're going a quarter inch from the side of each corner of the wood here. We've got our pilot holes drilled, so now we've got a four foot plank and a two foot plank, and this is where it's helpful to have a friend's help. You wanna put them at a 90 degree angle, and we're using our three inch wood screws. We're gonna attach all the sides together here. That screw is going in our pre-drilled holes right through bo both pieces of wood. Grab a signed copy of my book on raised bed gardening over at CallieKimGardeningHome.com. Buy the seed book bundle and you'll get $5 off. Now keep in mind those standard wood sizes do vary sometimes at the hardware store. This one is actually one and a half inches wide rather than two inches wide. Perfectly okay. And it's about nine and a half inches uh, width here on this part, which is perfectly okay here. So just make the adjustment and make it fit with whatever materials you have available. Got the two levels of the beds done, super excited. The yes. raised bed is taking shape. Now we're gonna stack the two levels on a level surface so we can do step two, and that is attach the legs. 
For the legs of the raised bed, we're gonna use our two and a half foot lengths of our four by four posts. These are super sturdy, gonna hold up to all the solar you're gonna put in your raised bed. This build's coming together really easy, Jerry. Sure is. And I know you can do it too. Now, first off, what you're gonna do is pre-drill holes on the inside of your bed. You wanna pre-drill about six holes, three inches apart, up and down the bottom. Now we've already done that. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the legs. When you're drilling your pilot holes, you wanna make sure that you use a drill bit that's slightly smaller than your hex screw, and then drill the pilot hole all the way through the size of the raised bed into the post. It'll be a whole lot easier to put in your hex screws when it's time for that. So I'm gonna line up the leg here on the corner of the raised bed, on the outside of the raised bed. And what we're using to attach the legs are these four inch hex screws, super sturdy, and they're really going to attach the leg well. So Jerry's drilling them in the pilot holes. You need six screws for each leg. And again, they're spaced about three inches apart up and down the sides of the raised bed. Going all the way through the raised bed into the leg here. And just note that at this point, we're building our raised bed upside down. We're going to flip it when we put it in its final resting place. And no big deal if corners don't line up. We're not building rockets here. It's going to be OK. Got all four of the legs attached. Nice job, Jerry. And before we flip the bed over, we've got to attach the bottom. So we've got our three 51 inch lengths of wood, two of the 10 inch pieces and one of the four inch piece. And what we're gonna do is just lay them over the bottom of the bed here. We've got our skinnier piece and Jerry's got the wider pieces. I line things up. And it's okay if there's gaps here between the wood because we are going to be lining the bottom of the bed with landscape fabric so all the soil doesn't run through the gaps. So we've got them lined up. Now we're going to drill pilot holes three inches apart along the outer edge of the bed. And we're going to be attaching them with our four inch screws. And keep in mind when you're drilling your pilot holes, go all the way through the bottom of the bed into the sides of the bed so it's a lot easier to drill your screw. Now that our pilot holes are drilled, we're going to attach the bottom of the bed and the side of the bed with a four inch screw. We've got the bottom of the bed attached. That was really fun. Now step four is to drill drainage holes in the bottom of the bed. Drainage is super important for your vegetables. And what we're going to use for that is a 3 8 inch drill bit. So you want the holes to be a little bit larger to allow all the water to drain through. And we're just going to drill the holes every two to three inches apart throughout the bottom of the bed. And for this, you want the drill bit to go all the way through the bottom planks to allow the water to drain through. We have a lot of our holes already drilled from our previous build, but I'm going to go ahead and drill them all out again so the holes are nice and clear for drainage. Got the holes drilled for drainage, and we also have gaps in between the boards, which are definitely going to help with drainage too. So we're just going to brush it off. It's so pretty, and I love the smell of the wood. It looks so nice in our spot over here. And now we're ready for step five, which is to flip the bed over and line the bottom with landscape fabric. All right. Oh, I love this. It's so exciting. Looking good, Jerry. Yes, it is. This thing is solid. So cut a piece of landscape fabric to approximate the bottom of the bed. Just kind of lay it out here in the bottom. This will help all your soil from draining through. And don't worry about it if the landscape fabric overlaps a little bit. No big deal. Again, we're not building rockets here. We're just building a raised bed to grow veggies. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and staple the landscape fabric to the inside of the bed. You want to go every two to three inches apart along the edges. The raised bed is lined with landscape fabric. It's all complete. All that's left is to move it into place. But for that, we'll need camera guy. I'm not going to lie. This is heavy. It is, but that means it's strong and sturdy. Okay. It's going to handle all the soil and the plants without a problem. Look at that. Well, how do you like it? 
I absolutely love it. I'm so excited about this raised bed. All that's left is to fill it and plant it, but we're gonna do that on another video. You just see this raised bed back here after two years since the photo shoot for the book. It's right in here. And head over to CallieKimGardenHome.com. Grab the First Time Gardener Raised Bed Gardening. I bundled it together with the Raised Bed Kitchen Garden Seed Collection. When you buy the book seed bundle, you save $5. You can get an additional 25% off this week with the code CallieKim25. I cannot wait to get this bed planted. Yeah, I'd be curious to know if anyone is going to build this with us. Definitely let us know and subscribe, follow along with the series. We're gonna be growing a ton of vegetables together this spring and summer. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you see on the next, on the next video. video.